brought closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wattaqul arham wattaqul la alladhi tasaluna bihi wal arham you know the position of the mother the respect that you must show to her al jannatu tahta aqdamil ummahat the prophet said paradise is under the feet of the mothers now the second section down trodden oppressed atul yatama amwalahu hand over to the orphans their properties and belongings if somebody has died then she has left orphans they are still minor they can't look after their affairs the whole thing goes in the hands of the uncles and now those uncles are not paying and giving away giving over the property of the orphans to them they are eating it up so the this these are now uh, deprived you must hand over the property of the orphans to them don't change anything which is bad of your possessions with something which is good in their possession i will give these things to him well the the bad things i can change you know i can place here i will complete the number of this orphan you had your father had left 10 camels well i have given you 10 camels but not the good camels that the father had left but the weak ones the diseased ones wala tatabaddalu khabisa bit tayyib wala taakulu amwalahum amwalahum ila amwalikum don't try to eat up their property by mixing the, it, it, it with your own property when you intermix the two then it's very easy to be dishonest you must keep the property of the orphan which is under your guardianship separate discreet don't mix it with your so that you can knowingly or unknowingly you misuse your authority and you eat up their property innahu kana huban kabira verily it's a very big crime in the eyes of allah وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُخْسِتُوا فِي الْيَتَامَةِ And if you fear, you are afraid that you will not be able to do justice to the orphan girls. This ayah is very important because some of the people who don't believe in hadith or sunnah of the prophet, the munkareen of sunnah, they have misinterpreted this ayah. The real interpretation comes from a hadith. from Aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and we shall see that that very explanation is given by Quran itself in ayah number 127 of this very surah we shall read it inshallah what is the background of this ayah because you know if somebody had minor orphan girls under his guardianship and that minor girl had some property also which was left over by her parents now a person who is the guardian marries her there is no need of giving any dowry she is under your control she is already under your thumb and there is nobody to ask for her rights you can treat her as you like because she was an orphan she didn't have anybody any father any brothers to look after her rights so they used to do it well this is the orphan i marry her now all the property comes to me and nobody is there to ask for the rights of this orphan girl so allah subhanahu wa taala says wa in khiftum alla tuqsitu fil yatama if you are afraid that you won't be able to do justice in case of the orphan girls here yatama means the orphan girls fan kahu don't marry them but marry ma taba lakum min an nisa you can marry other women who please you whom you like masna wa sulasa wa ruba 
the sharia of allah is allowing you to have two wives at a time three at a time even four at a time not more that is the last masna wa salasa wa ruba there are so many women if you have to marry you can marry other women don't marry this orphan girl which is under your guardianship because you won't be able to do justice to her and she will not be backed by any support from his her own family so you are very much liable to do injustice what وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُخْسَتُوا فِي الْيَتَامَا فَانْكِهُوا مَا تَعَبَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَسْنَا وَسُلَاسَ وَرُبَا You are allowed to marry two or three or four at a time. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا But this permission of marrying more than one woman is conditional. إِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا If you are afraid you won't be able to do justice between these wives, فَوَاحِدَةٌ Then you should have only one wife because you have to do justice. Justice in all the measurable things, all the measurable things. The time that you spend with this wife must be equal to the time you are spending with the other wife. The money that you are giving monthly for household management to this wife, the same money should be given to the other wife. Anything which can be counted, which can be measured, must be absolutely equal. That is the condition. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Permission is there. You can have two wives, three wives, four wives at a time. But this is the condition. You have to fulfill this justice. Only there is one exception. There may be, you know, your heart is more inclined to one and not that much inclined to the other. But this is beyond your control. And this will be made clear in this very surah. We shall find in the next passages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted that this is the weakness of man so this is pardonable but whatever can be measured or counted in that absolute equality has to be maintained time, money, dresses, etc, etc dwelling this must be absolutely equal at par with each other وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدَلُوا فَوَاحِدَةٌ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ عِبَانَكُمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ عِبَانَكُمْ and in addition to the wives you can have those slave girls whom your right hands possess, they are besides. They are not counted in wives. Wives are separate. Zalik Adna Allah Ta'ulu. This is more likelier that you won't go astray and you won't be deviate. You won't deviate from the right path. So if you keep only one wife, you are saved from doing any injustice. You will not be responsible on the day of judgment for any injustice to any of one of them. So it's better to have one. This is persuasion. It's safer to have one. But you are allowed. There can be circumstances that a person needs more than one wife. You can, but you have to do justice. Full justice to all your wives. And not beyond four.